Hi, and welcome to Professor Pincushion. I'm Tova, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a tulle skirt. Whether you want this skirt for a costume or just wanna dress up in something fun and flirty, this tulle skirt is easy to make. I'll show you how you can make this skirt in any size and create a pattern that you can use again and again. We have a lot of steps to cover, so let's go ahead and get started. Here are some of the supplies I'm going to be using for this project. I have some tulle and then I also have some lining. Now you should create your pattern before you go to the fabric store so you get an accurate amount on how much you're going to need because it's going to vary from person to person and then how long you want to make your actual skirt. You're going to use some elastic. I'm using two inch wide elastic but you can really use any width that you prefer and the amount is going to be based on what your waist measurement is. We need some pattern paper in order to create our pattern for the skirt, a ruler, a pencil, a flexible tape measure in order to get those body measurements. And I'm gonna be using my sewing machine, straight pins, some all-purpose thread, and then some fabric scissors. Using your flexible tape measure, you're going to take three body measurements and we're gonna use this in order to create our pattern for the skirt. So the first one is going to be the waist. So you're gonna go around the circumference of the waist and that's gonna be the smallest part above your belly button. Then you're going to take the hip circumference. So this is gonna be the widest part of your hips and again, you're gonna go around the whole body at the hip point. Then you're gonna take the length. So whatever you want the length of the skirt to be, you're gonna measure from the waist, so the same point where you took this measurement, down to where you want the skirt to end. Now we're gonna be using those measurements in order to create our pattern. Essentially, we're gonna be creating a circle skirt. So if you've done a circle skirt pattern before, this should feel very familiar. Because this could end up as quite a large pattern, I'm gonna be doing a smaller scale just so it's easier for you to see, but the steps are gonna be the same and you would put in your measurements instead of mine. So you're gonna substitute your own measurements. First, we're gonna be creating the foundation. So this isn't the actual pattern, this is just to help us create the pattern. So you're gonna start by creating a box on your paper. So I have a long line here, I have another line here, and I have another line here. I don't need one here. So it's just a three-sided box. And the length of these measurements can be anything. So just do some long lines and it doesn't matter for the measurements. Again, it's not based on any of your body measurements. So this is about 20 inches, this is 10, and this is about 19 inches or so. Just for my example, I didn't really measure it. The only thing I'm gonna do is, whatever I decided was gonna be this line measurement here, let's say I did 10 inches, on this line here, I'm gonna measure over 10 inches, I'm gonna make a mark, and then from this mark, I'm gonna draw a line to that corner. Take your hip measurement, and we're gonna do a little bit of math with this measurement for the next step. So I'm gonna take the hip measurement, I'm gonna divide it by four. So in my case, it ends up being five. I'm gonna take this number, and then I'm gonna divide it by 1.57. This is, gives me 3.18. I'm just gonna round it up a little bit, so it ends up being three and a quarter. So this is the number that I'm gonna use for the next step. It's gonna be my radius for creating the inside circle. This is what you should have so far. We have the three-sided box and then we have the line going diagonally. You're gonna take the number that you got from your last calculation, so what is the radius of a circle, and you're gonna take that measurement. So from this point on this line, I would go three and a quarter and you would use whatever number you got. Three and a quarter, make a mark, and then on this line, three and a quarter. And then you're gonna draw a curve that connects those three points. Now, if you need to add a couple more points in between, I would still use the three and a quarter. That could help you out as well. Use your flexible tape measure and measure the curve lines. You're gonna go right along that curve and make note of that measurement. Multiply it by four, and you should get a number close to what your original hip measurement was. Chances are it's going to be a little bit bigger, which is fine. You just don't want it to be smaller. If it ends up being smaller, then you probably did something wrong in your measurement. And you can just take this curved line and just move it down a little bit and that'll give you a little bit more. The reason why we're doing it this way is this is going to be the waistline of the skirt. 
and it's going to be cinched in by the elastic, which is based on our waist measurement. But we need to be able to put the skirt on, fit it over our hips, so when the elastic is fully expanded, it can make it over our hip measurement. Now it's time to draw the hemline of our skirt. So in my example, I want it to be 12 inches from waist to hemline. I'm gonna take this number, 12 inches, and I'm gonna measure 12 inches now from this point because this is the waistline. So on this line from here, I'm gonna measure 12 inches, make a mark, 12 inches, make a mark, and 12 inches, make a mark. Now if it goes past this bottom line, that's fine. You can just go ahead and extend it to wherever you need it. Then you're gonna draw a smooth curve from these points. Now because these points are a little further apart, you may wanna just measure out your measurement just to give you a couple more points to connect it. This would be the final outline of my pattern. So you can see I made it a little bit darker. We have the waistline, you have a side here, a side here, and then you have the hemline. So this is the curve that I just drew. This is one quarter of a full circle. Now we're gonna talk about actually cutting out our pattern piece and then figuring out how much fabric you're going to need. Like I mentioned before, it kind of varies depending on the size of the skirt and also the length of the skirt. If I'm making a short skirt and you wanna make something that's more full length, obviously you're gonna need a lot more fabric, so it's a little bit difficult to say how much you're gonna need because your pattern's gonna be bigger than mine. So we're gonna pretend this fabric is some tool. Now this is just a single layer of fabric and it's really hard to see the tool on the table when it's a single layer, so we're just gonna substitute this fabric. And you'd do the same thing for the lining as well. So I have a single layer that I unfolded. So this would be the width of my tool, it's about 54 inches, and then this is the length. So however many yardage I wanna get. And we're just dealing with one layer so far. Obviously if you make a tool skirt, you may wanna do multiple layers. I'm first gonna take this fabric and I'm gonna fold it going this way towards the length. So I can be able to at least put my pattern on the fold and it's going to be covered by an extra layer of fabric. So it's not kind of hanging off like this, it's fully covered and you're at least getting one side on a fold. If your skirt pattern is very large or very long, chances are you're going to have to cut out your pattern pieces like that. And what you'll end up with is a half circle. So I would need to cut out two of these half circles and stitch them together on the side in order to create a full circle. So what the ultimate goal is, is creating the full circle. If your pattern is on the smaller side and it's not that long, what possibly what you can do is fold your fabric again. So this was just folded here and I took it and I folded it in half again. So now I have a fold on this side and I have two folds on this side as well. So now I could place this on a fold and this on a fold. If you don't have your skirt going off the fabric or your pattern going off the fabric, then you can cut it like this and what you end up with is a full circle and you can skip the step of sewing half circles together. Here's a full circle if you're able to fold it twice when cutting it out of your fabric. So this is what we wanna have ultimately. So either you're folding it and you're ending up with a full circle or you're sewing two halves of circles together and you're going to have a seam here and here. Whatever way you can get it to fit. Once you have one, then you can calculate how much fabric you're gonna to need total. So from my pattern piece, I want one layer from my lining and then however many layers you want from your tool. I made a skirt for myself, it was knee length, and I figured I needed one and a half yards per layer. So one and a half for my lining, and then however many layers I wanted of the tool. So I did four layers, that means I needed six yards of tool in order to create my skirt. Tool doesn't fray, so we don't have to worry about finishing the hemline of the tool, but chances are your lining is going to fray, so we're gonna finish it with a rolled hem, and it'll be slightly shorter than the tool layers of your skirt. You're gonna take your lining layer, and on the outside edge, so the whole outside curved area, you're going to stitch using a regular straight stitch a quarter inch away from the raw edge. Use a matching color thread for this part. I'm just using a contrasting one, so it'll be a little bit easier for you to see the next part of this. 
And you can see I'm just sewing around the edge. It's a single layer of fabric. I'm not stitching anything together. Flip your lining over to the wrong side of the lining and you're going to fold up from the right side to the wrong side. So the stitching ends up right on that fold line. If you want to press it, you can do that as well. The next step is to take this area where you fold it up and fold it up again. So it's basically covering up this raw edge right here and you should end up with a very small, tiny hem there. Now it's a little bit too small in order to put pins. So if you want to do something like binding clips, which I did right here, you can do that. It tends to be a little bit easier than trying to get pins through it. Stitch down your hem using a regular straight stitch. So you can see I'm going along my fold line. It's pretty small, so you can even go in the middle. And again, you'll want to use a matching thread color. Put your tool layers on top of your lining layer. You're matching up the raw edges on the inner circle only, and you can see I put pins in here, and I'm just doing two layers for this demonstration. The more layers you do, though, the fuller your skirt will be. After you have all your layers pinned on the inside circle, you're going to do a basting stitch just to hold everything together until we put the elastic on. So you can just do it a half inch from the raw edge and you're gonna use the longest stitch on your machine. Take your waist measurement, cut a piece of elastic of the same length, and you're going to bring the raw edges together and just put a pin a half inch in and then just put on the elastic and test it out to make sure that it's going to be tight enough because we're gonna do a half inch seam allowance here. And so if you need to cut up a little bit more just to make it a little bit tighter so it stretches and fits your waist, you can go ahead and do that. But you wanna do that before you actually sew it. Sewing my half inch seam allowance. And I like to do the seam at least twice to make sure that it's not gonna come undone. So when I get to the end, I'm just gonna do reverse and then go back in the other direction. I divide my elastic into four parts. So it's a circle. I put one at my seam. You can see I pressed my seam open or I just kind of pressed it with my fingers. Then I did one directly across from that. I brought these together and then I did one on the end. So it's an even four parts. Then I broke up my skirt in the inner circle and I did the same thing. I'm going to start pinning the four parts together so they're not gonna match. Obviously my elastic is smaller than my skirt, but I'm just gonna bring it together and pin it like this and let the skirt kind of sag in between. So you're just gonna keep it together just at the pins. Now when I'm placing my skirt onto my elastic, I'm going wrong side to wrong side. So I'm looking at my seam here and this is what it's gonna look like when you pin it. So I'm looking at the right side of my skirt, but I can see the wrong side of my elastic. And it's sticking out past the fabric of the skirt, I would say about a quarter of an inch. So you don't wanna have the raw edges matching or the edge of the elastic and the edge of the skirt matching. You're just gonna bring the skirt fabric down just a little bit, about a quarter of a, an inch. I'm ready to sew on my elastic. I'm actually just gonna stitch right on top of my basting stitch from before. But to do it, I'm gonna take a grip at where my next pin is. You can see my pin is in my hand right here. And I'm going to pull it as I'm sewing it. And I'm just doing a straight stitch for this. And then I'm just gonna stitch right along as I'm pulling it. I'm trying to make sure I go straight. It's, it's really difficult. So we'll stop right there so I can adjust my fabric here and then I'm gonna pull it again. And that's gonna gather your skirt fabric onto the elastic. After you stitched on the elastic, you're gonna go ahead and pull it out. So I'm still looking at the right side of the skirt. You can still see my skirt with the elastic peeking out. So if I pull this out without making the skirt go wrong side out. So now, all this raw edge is gonna be tucked underneath the elastic and it looks nice all the way around. So you can go ahead, take it back to the machine and just stitch it again. And again, you're still gonna to have to pull it as you're sewing it just because you don't wanna, you wanna make sure that it's gonna stretch when you're trying to put it on. 
And then that'll keep the elastic in place so then we won't see this raw edge and the elastic will stay down. Here is my completed skirt. Now I kept mine pretty simple, but you can do variations to make it more unique. Instead of doing your two layers in all one length, you can do different layers in different lengths for more fullness or add more layers. You can also add more than one color of tulle to your layers for something different. If you make one of our tulle skirts, please share a picture on one of our social media pages. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to get notified of our weekly releases. Also check out ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 350 sewing tutorials. If you would like to directly support us, you can check out our Patreon campaign and earn some exclusive perks. Thanks for watching.